So this frame here is going to be an enclosure for my 3D printer. It's just simple. Uh, I think it's one inch by three quarter inch wood I got from the home center. Uh, I'm not sure what the original purpose is, but it was cheap. And I just picked through and got the straightest pieces I could and uh, put it together. You can see right there, I actually measured wrong. So I just glued in a block and made it work. So it's all just held together with clamps at the moment. We're going to put in some magnets to hold it together. Let's see how that works. A little bit more about the frames. I just made these with pocket hole jigs. There's just one screw per intersection. It seems to be holding up really well. It doesn't have any twists to it. I might hit this all with the sander. It's just really rough. It's not, you know, pretty. I, I'm at least going to clean up some of this kind of stuff before I start putting it all together. The plan to hold it together is I bought these for a different project and I have a few left. Um, they're just little magnets. They have a screw hole, but I don't have any screws. I figure that hole is just going to help with the adhesive. And because I don't have a ton here, I'm going to actually use uh, roofing nails to stick these. So these are going to go in like that. And the, the magnets will hold on one side. <laughs> Stay. Okay. The magnets will be on one side. So I went through and I marked uh, these little marks right here. And they have corresponding marks somewhere. They're right there. Um, so I'm going to go through and put these. So these nails will go in here like that. And I think they're just going to be okay. I'll pre-drill them because I don't want to lose that. And I'll put some adhesive in there as well. And then that is going to butt up against that right there where I will drill a very shallow hole and, and glue in these magnets. And I'll test it here. I might put them in upside down actually just to see how that works. But, um, and I can always go back and put in more magnets or something else later, but all right, I got the, I got the drill press set up with a three eighths inch bit here that fits these perfectly. I did a few test holes and this is just a little bit proud. That way it has good contact with the nail head when I, when I get to that part. And this is set up so that I can drill all the holes right in the middle this way. And then I can bring the frames in and just when I'm ready, I'll just line up those holes and everything should be centered properly or, or, you know, in the right position. And I just got to make sure that laterally they're okay. So we'll see how that goes. Drill all those holes now. All of the holes are drilled. I have the little recesses in the bottom and the, all around the frame. I did definitely mix up some and drill some places where I'm not going to put magnets and drill some holes where I'm not going to put nails. Uh, doesn't matter. This thing is, is a test, a proof of concept. Uh, I am definitely going to come back and hit everything with sandpaper before I put the glue on here. Uh, I've got to take it inside to glue it up. It's too cold out here. I don't think the glue will set, but I'm going to use this uh, weld bond. Uh, the affiliate links in the affiliate links in the description for, for this, for the magnets, and uh, the, the last part of this uh, if you've already seen the thumbnail, you'll see the window covering. I'll put some links for that in there, but that's that's the trick of this. This is what I want to test. Okay, it's been a few weeks. Uh, it's the holidays. Things are busy, and I haven't got back to this, but this is my current computer setup. Um, got a piano bench right here. These are all the frames I made. I got to get those finished. Uh, first thing I need to do, or the next thing I need to do as part of this project, is clean this out. I, I threw together a table. I'll show you that. But the table is there so that my son can have his piano bench back. Uh, so let's see if I can make this snap thing work. I don't know. Let me try again. Hold on. Okay. I vacuumed and cleaned up all the hairs and strings from the filament. That was quite the mess. And I got this table in place under here. It's just a piece of wood from a local factory that puts all their stuff by the street. Threw together some real basic legs. And my Ender 3 V2 sits on there. Next, we're going to get the frame in place. And I'm thinking the coats might be in the way, but we'll see. Okay, and here is the enclosure in place. I still have to put the skin on it, and that's the real trick. So I will do that next. I'm going to be using this window sealing shrink film to create the enclosure. This is something I already had here, all the wood, the stuff I had here. So this is technically not costing me anything, but this is super cheap stuff. So let's see how this goes. Well, 
Okay, so that should show, it's not terribly hard to get it on. The hardest part is actually, for me anyway, peeling off the, the backing after you get it down. Uh, but this thing, this each window has taken, you know, four or five minutes. Um, honestly, I've done these on, on the window windows, like vertical windows, and it's much easier to do. But this is done. It's not even pulled tight yet, so that's the next step after I get all of these uh, applied. Then we'll do the heating process and get them pulled really nice and tight. Okay, so here is the final version. The film is all on and heated and nice and tight. It was, it was really pretty quick to get that in place. Um, I'm happy with it overall. For a kind of test of the, the idea, it worked. I would change some things. One, I would make sure I had enough magnets so that I'm doing a magnet to magnet connection at all the, those different points. The nails work, but they could definitely be stronger with magnets and that would be helpful. I would also probably use thinner pieces of framing, the wood. It's it's fine. It's just heavier, bulkier than it needs to be. Um, and I would definitely make sure I had straight lumber because there are some gaps where it's just not quite thick, uh, straight. It's just not, it just doesn't work. So, um, but yeah, this is the, the enclosure. The reason I did this, I, I one, I just wanted to try it. Two, I wanted to protect the 3D printer from a heat vent that's down to the left and a door that opens and closes all day that's to the right. I think there's some drafts. I also want to protect me and my kids from any potential uh, particulates that might be coming off of this uh, device. I've, I have heard that 3D printers can put out some some stuff, depending on what you're printing, but just it's going to make some nasty airborne particles, and I don't want that there. So this is there. It's going to be uh, a proof of concept success. And if anybody wants any information about it, let me know, and I'll put some links in the description. Thanks. Okay, one final review of the enclosure. And at, while I was finishing up the, the enclosure, I also installed the CR Touch that you can see there, the glow, glowing purple. And those two things have made a huge difference in how this thing has printed. So I cleaned the bed plate. You can see I did scratch it a little bit in the process of setting up the CR Touch. Um, just getting the, the Z height offset, whatever, uh, figured out. But now that it's working, this is printing really well. The, the adhesion to the bed is better than I've ever had it. So look at all these little tree supports that are just holding. They're just staying there. And I'm just shocked. I was using glue sticks and, and hairspray and stuff to try and make that kind of stuff happen in the past. And it worked some, some of the time. But this a print like this with all these little tree supports, would I wouldn't have even tried it. And now that I have this CR Touch and the enclosure, uh, I'm I'm just blown away at how much better this this uh, Creality 3, Ender 3 V2 is working. So, all right, thanks for watching.